Okay, listen. The Cowboys are in danger, in my opinion. It's just certain stuff that we cannot afford to do with this high-risk type of season. To me, this season seems like we are banking everything on the draft and the players that we have, player development that you know they love to say, that they say all the time. So when I look at this team in that aspect, these are some things that we just can't allow to happen. Like We have to be honest in our analysis and our evaluation of these players. We cannot afford politics this year. If any year on your calendar that you could think of, this is one particular year that we cannot afford to be biased and putting people in the dog houses and keeping good players off the field. I feel like this year, if you gonna go all player development, all draft, all of this type of stuff, all the UDFAs and just say, hey, let the best man win, please keep all politics out of the equation. Let's start off with the running back position. We already know what's going on with the quarterback position. You got an all pro, Dak Prescott. None, nothing to ride home about. We don't have to even visit that. But let's start off at running back. Now, right now, we do have Malik Davis, Rico Dowell, Little Legs, Deuce Vaughn, and we got um, Snoop Connor. So, out of that stable of running backs, there should be nobody with priority. Nobody on that roster as a running back should be comfortable. And quite frankly, if we draft some running backs, if we draft two running backs, say for instance we draft a running back and then we got a, a shining, great UDFA running back that come in here and just blow the doors off. We should not be biased. Nobody should have faith in themselves to say that they have a position on this team as far as the running backs go. To me, all man, any man for itself, you know what I'm saying, it should be a fight to the death for the running back position per se. You know what I'm saying? It shouldn't be nobody that's feeling comfortable or confident about the fact that they are a running back for the Dallas Cowboys. Not Rico, not Deuce. It should be a full-fledged competition at running back, no matter how we acquire them. Just let them boys go for what they know. Okay, full back, we should definitely let Hunter Lipke get some more run, be more involved in his offense. That's definitely something that we need to see. You know, he did have some decent showings, like in the Miami game with the unfortunate fumble, but the rest of the game, he was pretty much showing a lot of signs that he could be a productive player. So, you know, get him more involved. He was going in, making some big time blocks and stuff like that, some key runs, showing a lot of tenacity in the way that he played. So give him a little more run as well. He's pretty much in the competition by itself. Now, for one of the biggest positions, one of the biggest, you know what I'm saying, this could change a lot of stuff. To me, in my opinion, at tight end, there should be no one safe other than Jake Ferguson. I don't care what position we draft you in. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your last name is. No one should be safe other than Jake Ferguson. So when John Stephen Jr. come back, he should have an open competition between John Stephen Jr., schoolmaker, and Peyton Hendershot. Neither one of those guys should be really just prioritized over the other. It, they, it should be an open competition. Forget all of the biasness, forget all of the politics, let those boys go for it, go at it, and let the best man win. We can't afford to play around with this talent that we have when we really trying to win. So hey man, let John Stevens Jr., if he come out to be the best player, like he was looking like last year in camp, he, sh he deserved a role, and I don't want to hear nothing else about it. Let that man play. Let it be Jake Ferguson, John Stevens Jr. Let Schoolmaker and Hendershot, let them figure it out themselves. I don't care about what type of capital you put into them. We need the best players on the field to try to win in 2024. Okay, far as the center position, it seems like we don't have a center on the roster with Tyler Biotis going to the commanders, but we do have Brock Hoffman, so maybe they want to try to convert him into a center. Let the best man win, man. Maybe you draft a center. If you confident in Brock Hoffman, maybe you draft a center in the lower rounds and let that be an open competition. He is a UDFA. Let that be an open competition. Let the best man win. But we should not be guaranteeing a lot of these positions, nobody should be guaranteed. Like, nobody. It should be an open competition. 
We pretty much know our tackle situation is probably going to be a rookie. Maybe let him and Austin Richards go at it and, you know, let the best man win. Matt well, let's go. Let all these tackles that you got on your roster go 100% open competition. Let the best man win for that position. Even if you do draft a rookie high, don't let him just walk in the building and be a starter. Let's see if he can make it through a gauntlet of real competition, hungry individuals that's trying to get on this football team and make a starting role for themselves. We know guard is pretty much a lot. We got a gold jacket right guard, Zach Martin. Then we got an all pro guard, Tyler Smith. We know them, them positions is pretty sealed up. That's the only type of comfortability we need in this team. People that's doing stuff like that, like over and beyond outstanding type performances. So we don't have to worry about the guard position. At now all. let's talk about my favorite position in the world. That's wide receiver. We already know we had C.D. Lamb. He was the best wide receiver last year, in my opinion. You know, maybe Tyreek Hill and him, 1A, 1B. But C.D. Lamb was phenomenal last year. He went crazy. He went berserk. But at wide receiver two, you already know how I feel. Brandon Cooks, you know, I feel like we could have got more. I feel like we could have been better at wide receiver two. It reared his ugly head in some critical situations in the big games. We didn't have too much of a need for it, playing the regular teams and the regular games and stuff like that. But when we played better competition, the glowing, glaring need that we needed a wide receiver too came to show up. So, man, I'm not saying Brandon Cooks was a bad wide receiver too. I'm just saying I want to get better at that position. I feel like it's still upgradable. You can have a real dynamic player that's alongside of CD Lamb. Let them grow together and go crazy. But, yeah. okay, I do want to see an open competition at the wide receiver position. Not just Brandon Cooks, you know, he's pretty much a, a, a solid number two. But, you know, after that, Jalen Tolba coming in at three, or, or do you use Kevante Turpin as a wide receiver? What do y'all even count him as? I would like to know that in the comment section. Y'all make sure y'all put that in the comment section. What do you count Kevante Turpin as? Is he just a gadget guy, a pseudo guy that has no position? But the Cowboys could say, screw you, landlord. We don't need wide receiver. We could just throw Turpin in there and give him some real snaps and give him some real opportunities. And to be honest, I wouldn't really be mad at that. In the wide receiver room, Turpin is kind of the forgotten man, so i really honestly be okay with that. I wouldn't be too mad. But we need to use this 4-4, super fast, 4-3 guy, some packages together in this scheme for Kevontae Turpin, or let him just rock out and be the wide receiver three. Like, we want Jalen Tober to assume that role, but if he's not up to par, you know, friend of the show, you know, we respect him, we, we rooting for him, but hey, if he's not up to par, you need to let the best man win. This whole video is about open competition, nobody's safe, no man is safe. I feel like the way we came about building this team and, you know, going into 2024, I feel like we have no room for error. Nobody, no favoritism, no politics, just all open competition and let the best man win. Maybe Jalen Brooks come up and, and take the number three role. Who knows? Any one of those wide receivers, nobody should be safe after Brandon Cooks. Like, regardless of how you think I feel about Brandon Cooks, I feel like he's still safe at least one of the positions, two or three. You know, if we draft someone like Keon Coleman or you know, Brian Thomas, maybe he assumed the three role. But let's say, you know, he could be safe in a, in a two or a three position. After that, Jalen Tolba, Jalen Brooks, Jalen Marino, Cropper, all the Jalens in the world, none of those guys should be safe on this roster or on this team as far as them being wide receivers over here. So, hey, let it be open competition. Who knows what'll happen? Turpin is an interesting nugget in the middle of all of it. I don't really even know how to, you know, compute what we'll do with him in this offense, honestly. Will he increase his role or will he do more of the same stuff that he was doing to begin with? We'll never know. But yeah, wide receiver is a very interesting one. And I can't wait to see what happens and how it play out in camp. Who knows, maybe I even get my wish and they draft a wide receiver high in the draft this year and it'll really shake up the room.
So let's talk about the cornerback position. Now, I honestly feel like this should be an open competition. The third cornerback, that should be open competition 100%. Like, I know we signed Jordan Lewis. I know Jordan Lewis had a decent showing later on in the year last year. I like J. Lou as a player. I think he's a decent, good depth corner. But at the same time, you got corner tanning on your team who need to show some. What about Eric Scott Jr.? Do you hold him back? Do you take snaps from Eric Scott Jr. if he just go crazy in camp again and just transition that on to the preseason and to the regular season? Do you hold him back because you got J. Lou? I don't want to see stuff like that. Or J. Lou, you got uh, Nation Wright right there. What are we going to do with him? We've been waiting on him to do something for years now. Hey, we seen a little promise. I seen the, uh, the year before last, the Tennessee game. He had a good game that game. He got an interception and stuff like that. We haven't seen much from him at all. That was already a freelance type, risky, shot in the dark type third round pick that year. So now it's looking like we were wrong on that end in 2020. I believe that was 2020. One of those years where we couldn't really be physically around the players and we had to use zoom and all that stuff so now i'm looking at nation right it's about time for him to be you know on his rookie contract you're gonna have to sign him so we don't know nothing about nation right so hey let that be an open competition for cornerback three i think that's only right then you got another player like Israel Mukwamu. Like, what about him? I know he had some good showings against Tampa in the playoffs and all of this stuff. Friend of the show, shout out to him for that. But, hey, I want to see Izzy get an open competition for this third cornerback spot. Like, did Jordan Lewis do enough to demand that he is the third cornerback in this, on this football team? I'm not sure. And like I said, I don't want no biases holding us back. I don't want no politics holding us back. I really think it should be an open competition for that cornerback three position. And I think that's just fair. Three and four. You need four corners on your football team. More than likely, you're going to be running with three in a nickel position. So, hey, we need three solid cornerbacks, and I think Israel really deserves an opportunity. He played good ball when we called his number. When we needed him, he played good football. So I only think it's right. Now, here's another very interesting position, the safety position. I really want to see what we're going to do here because, you know, it's hard for me to see – J. Run really signing back. I think it might be time to move on. You know, nothing against him as a player, as a person. But I think we probably need to upgrade. He kind of struggled at times last year. And we have some formidable people behind him that probably could play better or give him the opportunity. So now let's see what y'all want to do. Marquise Bell supposed to move from linebacker back to safety. Do he deserve to be that free safety or that box safety coming down, guarding tight ends and stuff like that? Do he deserve to be on the field? Or are you going to say Dono and Malik Cooker? How you going to run that safety room? Or is it even going to be a J. Ryan Curse role in Mike Zimmer defense? Who knows? But I do think that safety room will be interesting. Will Marquise Bell come in and just take over a position? Or do you let the young gun, Ranye Thomas, come in and find a role for himself? Me personally, I think he could probably do good in a rangy type situation. I believe he got the range to play free safety. So are we just guaranteeing Malik Cooker a starting position? I like what he did, but hey, let the competition be open. Let's see if Ranye can play free safety with some range and dominate and take over that position. Give him a fair shot. Let's not just usher nobody in, grandfather nobody in to some of these positions. I feel like we could probably get better. Like, I like Malik. I, I appreciate what Malik Hooker gave to us. But at the same time, if we can get better, we can get better. I feel like that's an upgradable position. I do like what he did, though. But, you know, at the same time, I want to get better. I want to get better. So, hey, let Ranye get a fresh shot at that free safety role. Let's see what Marquise Bell could do. Or you just going to let Dono rock out. I like Dono, too. But, hey, let's shake it up a little bit and see. Let the best man win. I feel like that's the type of vibes we need to be on in the safety room. It's going to be interesting to see what happened in count. Okay, linebackers. You do have Eric Kendricks coming in. You got DeMarvion Overshawn coming back from an ACL injury. Then you got Damone Clark. Now, do Damone Clark deserve to be a straight-up starter? Do he deserve to be grandfathered in as a starter? 
I don't think so. I don't know what other people think, but hey, I feel like that third linebacker could be up for grabs. I feel like it should be an open competition. Who knows? Overshawn may not even just deserve to be pushed in like that. I know he was a high draft pick, but we need to see. We need them to earn it. We need to see let the best man win type vibes, even in the linebacker position. If you draft a kid, let him be the competition over there. Like, I need full competition at the linebacker position. We've been bad on the second level for too long, even when LVE was here and healthy and all of that. We haven't been the strongest team ever on the second level of our defense. It's been a big problem, and it don't help you stop the run, just like our defensive tackles. Now, when it comes to defensive tackle, you know this has been a struggle, and it's been a thorn in our side ever since, you know, Tristan Hill and all those other picks that we've been trying to find a defensive tackle. Now, look, we drafted Miser Smith last year. It did not work out. Of course, I'm not going to say he's terrible right now. He's a rookie, so it takes time for him to, you know, develop and get better and better. But at the same time, we needed production. It's not the young man's fault. I blame the front office for trying to push him into a starting role and be a dominant presence day one at defensive tackle. It just don't happen. So now we still need that production. We still need that slot field. We lost Jonathan Hankins. Now we got Carl Davis. We got uh, Chauncey Ghostin, also Digazur. He's pretty solid. I like also, I like what he bring to the table. But hey, Miser Smith, should that be an open competition with Chauncey Ghostin? Let's see what Chauncey do. I pretty much like what I seen from Chauncey, man. He didn't get too many opportunities. He was a big, strong kid coming out of Iowa. He never really got a real fast shot. Hey, let's see what happens. Y'all converted him to a defensive tackle, a, a defensive interior player for a reason. So, hey, let the man get a fast shake at a real job opportunity. Hey, I know we drafted Mizey number one, but if he can't get the job done, we need an open competition like we just do. If we give Mizey the opportunity and it don't work, hey, if, are we trying to win right now? Because if we are, we can let Mizey develop later and put somebody in there that can actually do the job. So. It is what it is. I know it sounds tough and harsh, but this is the type of attitude you need when you're trying to win. That's all I'm trying to do. I want this team to be better. I want this team to be successful. Last position, Edge. You already know Michael Parsons, all pro, looking like a great talent on the edge. So we don't have to talk about him. But we do got an age in D-Law. He had a great year. D-Law is my guy, very underrated player. But hey, father time is undefeated. I know he's getting a little older. Sometimes you gotta let the young bucks get in and do their thing. And maybe it's time to make that a rotational position for D-Law. Maybe you get Sam Williams involved more. Who knows? Maybe even Junior Fehoku could come in and be a contributor. We don't know. We haven't seen him. He didn't really suit up much last year, but we did draft him. So it's time to see what happens. They said they doing draft and development. They looking for the upgrade in their young players. That's a young player. Let's see what happened in count. Can he push some of these people in the position that's ahead of him? We need to be really finding that out because we haven't seen anything from the young man. And I don't know who fault it is, but it's just the facts. We haven't seen anything. So now it's about time for us to see what Junior could do, what um, Sam Williams can do. Can Sam Williams take over that role? We need to see what happens in this edge. And Tyrus, we, we got a lot of people who ain't seen no time. And if you're going to do draft and develop, we got to see it. There ain't no better time than the present. We need to erase all biases, all politics, and let the best man win. That's the only way we can have the best team out there on the field. So please, Joneses, stop meddling. Let the coaches coach. Let Mike McCarthy, let Zimmer actually put the real team out there, put the best men on the field for this new season coming up in 2024. But that's all I got for you today, man. Just holla at your boy, Land Lord from Alabama, with the same handle on all social media. And like I say, 1K, 1 love, Cowboys Nation. Let's go.